Eve. Half of the group is still yet to come. Well, welcome to worship service today. Uh, what a lovely day. Uh, it may be a little warm later today, but uh, just think about what it's going to be in three months. Our pastor is uh, off vacationing with his wife uh, in Texas somewheres, allegedly. Uh, we have no proof of that yet, but uh, we're here to, uh, to worship, and uh, I ask you to uh, prepare yourselves this morning for an interesting worship service, I hope. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Um, I have to make a disclaimer. Once again, Herb and I are up front. Um, last time it happened by coincidence that Tim asked Herb and Marilyn Cullen and asked me. This time, Marilyn knew that Herb was going to be here. I'll just say, don't try to say no to Marilyn Cullen, and it doesn't work. So, would you all stand for our welcome and send our call to worship this morning? We live in all things. All things live in us. We live by the sun. We move with the stars. We eat from the earth. We drink from the rain. We breathe from the air. We share with the creatures. We have strength through their gifts. We, rejoice in all of us. we depend on the forests. We have knowledge through their secrets. We, rejoice in all of us. we have the privilege of seeing and understanding. We have the responsibility of caring. We have the joy of celebrating. We, rejoice in all of us. we are full of the grace of creation. We are graceful. We are grateful. And hymn 145 in your hymnals or up on the screen.
please pray with me? God of all creation, as we look at the environment, your divine power and immense love are ever present. We thank you for the beautiful creation and abundant resources you have provided your children. We ask for your help in revealing how we can be better stewards of your creation. Help us to use only the resources we need, never being selfish by taking more than necessary. Please give us the opportunity to appropriately share our wealth with those who are less fortunate instead of disposing of our surplus. Help us to remember that the environment is home to all life and that we must take up the responsibility to ensure all life is respected. We thank you for this day and ask for your blessing on this journey. Amen. And now let us greet one another as a sign of God's peace here to stay.
Carrie in Hebrew. I can't even sing in English, and she sings so beautifully in Hebrew. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Our reading from the Old Testament this morning are some selected verses from Genesis. So if you're a real biblical person, you'll realize there's been phrases left out. Listen for the basic meaning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then God said, let there be light. And God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters. God called the dome sky. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. Then God said, let earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind. And God said, let there be lights in the sky to separate the day from the night. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of every kind. And it was so. So God created humankind in his image, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Our next reading this morning is Psalm 104. We haven't done this in a while, so pull out your hymnals to page 826. This is a responsive reading. You will be reading the text that's in bolder print, and along the way we will do a verse of him. So we're going to have Elna play it once through, and the next time then we sing it, And every time you see the little red R, you will then sing that verse again. Now, we've done it before. You're all intelligent people. You can handle this, okay? Ella, they're ready. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, and cover yourself with light as with a garment. Of the heavens like a tent, and have laid the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot, and ride on the wings of the wind. You set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be shaken. For the deep is the garment. At your rebuke they fled. 
They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. Make springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills. Every beast of the field, wild asses quench their thirst. Above the springs, the birds of the air have their nests, they sing among the branches. Manifold are your works. Wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. There go the ships, and Leviathan, whom you formed to play in it. When you give to them, they gather it. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Well, so far, so good. It's either me or the mic, so if uh, you can't hear me, stand up and wave your arms or something. Everyone talks about the weather, but there's not much we can do about it. There are several ways to forecast the weather. One is to uh, get a degree in meteorology and learn how to take advantage of all these high-tech equipment things, satellites and radar and uh, reports. And then you can report the weather on TV or in the newspaper. Or you can spend 10 bucks and buy this magic eight ball. If you ask the question, will it rain, you might get an answer like this. Yes, definitely. Cannot predict right now. Very doubtful. Who knows? And the outlook is good. On the other hand, you could ask a different question and get exactly the same answers. I have another choice. Learn how to predict the weather yourself. I think I can teach it to you in about a minute. You need to know about the underlying foundation that this relies on weather cycles. There are annual cycles. Summer, for instance, comes once a year. There are 10-year cycles. There are 100-year cycles. And there may even be longer cycles, but we haven't been keeping track of the weather long enough to know if there's a 500-year or a thousand year or longer cycle. There's also shorter cycles. There's a six to eight week cycle. 
and the one you're going to use today to learn this technique is a three-day cycle. Three-day cycle states that the weather will be the same for three days in a row. So if you predict the weather tomorrow will be the same as today, you're going to be correct over time two out of three times. Let me show you. Here's, here's a chart of the weather for 10-day period. The first day the weather was sunny, so you would predict that the next day that would be sunny also, and you would be right. And you can see as you go down through the, uh, the list, you would be right six out of nine times. Right after I learned this technique, the weather department on the NBC Today show announced that they accurately predicted the weather 67.4% of the time. They were right two out of three days, 67% of the time, using this technique. Not bad for weather predicting, and I'm suggesting that you can do the same thing. Well, this was a long way to get to the topic of the day, uh, but which is how to save the Earth. Weather is a factor, but first I have to tell you how this topic arose. Pastor Tim led a Bible study during Critter Camp this summer and used a resource called Green Faith with the subtitle, Mobilizing God's People to Save the Earth. This morning I want to share with you some of the ideas that the author presented and some of the suggestions that we have used here at MUMC. The core group from the summer Bible study has formed a, a group that we call the Green Team. The Green Team hopes to share ideas and implement some actions that will impact the Earth that we inhabit. I have also gathered a list of several hundred ideas and suggestions to save the Earth. A copy of this list will be available at the end of the service. I also will warn you that I may step on a few toes, including my own, with some of the stronger suggestions. We'll see. First, let's begin at the, uh, start at the beginning. Ginger read a condensed version of the creation story from chapter one of Genesis. God created the heavens and the earth and the water and the sky. God added plants and trees and day and night. Creatures and birds were included. And lastly, God created humankind. The people were instructed to be fruitful and to subdue the earth with the understanding that they were to take care of the earth and all the things that God had created. Let me repeat that. With the understanding that they were to care for the earth and all the things that God created. And God saw that everything was good. And it's clear that we, we know what we're supposed to do. United, the United Methodist Church has approved a statement of social principles that applies to this subject. Here's what the United Methodist General Conference approved. It's called Social Principles, the Natural World. All creation is the Lord's, and we are responsible for the ways in which we use and abuse it. Water, air, soil, minerals, energy resources, plants, animals, and space are to be valued and cons conserved because they are God's creation and not solely because they are useful to human beings. God has granted us stewardship of creation. We should meet these stewardship duties through acts of loving care and respect. Economic, political, social, and technological developments have increased our human numbers and lengthened and enriched our lives. However, these developments have led to regional defoliation, dramatic extinction of species, massive human suffering, overpopulation, and misuse and overconsumption of natural and non-renewable resources, particularly by industrial societies. This continued course of action jeopardizes the natural heritage that God has entrusted to all generations. Therefore, let us recognize the responsibility of the church and its members to place a high priority on changes in economic, political, social, and technological lifestyles to support a more ecologically equitable and sustainable world, leading to higher quality of life for all of God's creation. 
If you want to see the, uh, the rest of uh, the social principles on this topic, I would suggest doing a Google search on UMC social principles, and you'll get pages of what's going on. Okay, I'll talk louder, Stan. Thank you. So we have a clear picture of what is our responsibility to save the Earth. Some of the things that we have already done at MUMC include construction of a compost bin to recycle organic items. It's located near the barn in the backyard. We also serve fair, only serve fair trade coffee and chocolate. We use the good china and real silverware for dinners and other meal services some of the time. We have provided awareness of some of these issues about saving the earth. One aspect of taking care of the earth is keeping it clean. MUMC has adopted a section of highway in Mequon on Zedler where we are responsible for picking up the trash. Here's a picture of the sign that marks one end of the road section that we're responsible for. We also help keep the river clean. We recognize that there is much to know and that we're just getting started. So I'd like to invite you to join our efforts. Our next meeting is Monday, September 28th at noon. Bring a bag lunch. We recognize that not everyone can come at noon, so the meeting following that will be in the evening. And we'll let you know once that has been decided when and where. Some of the activities we have listed to explore include building a raised garden bed. At our first meeting, we had a guest speaker who was an expert on raised garden beds. Here's a sample from uh, one of our members uh, as a raised garden bed. The, uh, the guest shared a lot of tips, and we discovered there's a lot to learn about raising a garden in a, in a bed. Much, much more to learn. He also talked about upgrading the compost bin and details about what should be composted. Recycling at church has been discussed. We're also exploring a certification program. We're not sure what it's all involved, but we're gonna find out. A symbol has been selected for the green team. It is included in the current spire along with an article about the green team, so you can see what the symbol looks like. We also wanna spread the word about earth stewardship. Let me be very clear. We have a list of activities to consider, but no decisions have been made yet. Probably a lot of our ideas will need the approval of the trustees, and our group doesn't have a budget. That's where we stand. So I have a few thoughts about saving the earth that, that maybe involve a few of you. First, I wanna talk about plastic water bottles. I told you I might step on a few toes, here we go. Two point five million tons of plastic bottles were thrown away in one year. Tap water is cleaner, cheaper, and healthier than store-bought water. That's because bottled water is not regulated. In the year 2006, there were 60 billion, that's B billion, single-use drink containers were purchased. And three out of four of those were directly thrown out after their initial use. If you line them up end to end, these bottles would stretch to the moon and back 24 times. That's a lot of water bottles. Plastic bottles are among the most prevalent source of pollution found on our beaches. One estimate is that $100 billion was spent for bottled water in 2006. Imagine what that would be today. 10% of plastic produced every year worldwide ends up in the ocean. 70% of that amount ends up on the ocean floor where it likely will never degrade. Every square mile of ocean has 46,000 pieces of floating plastic. The problem with plastic is that it decomposes very slowly or not at all. When the plastic breaks down, it's not biodegradable, it's photodegradable. 
This means that the materials break down into smaller fragments. These pieces readily absorb toxins which contaminate the soil, waterways, and even animals if they ingest the uh, pieces of plastic. Bottom line, plastic is a problem, and it needs an answer. So one of the solutions is obvious. Get rid of the plastic bottles. Use reusable cups and containers and embrace a cultural shift away from use and toss mentality. There is some good news. There's new technologies being developed and studied to find alternatives to the current products. In the meantime, I think we need to find alternatives to the plastic bottle ourselves. How many of you have something like this? Wonderful, thank you very much. How about some activities around the house? Real quickly, um, let's consider water. Uh, can, thinking about laundry, use cold water as much as possible or buy colored clothes to reduce bleach use. And um, about a shower, uh, there's one word that covers it and that's shorter, particularly if you're younger. They're supposed to get a little snicker out of that. Recycling, we want to do as much as possible. The goal should be to recycle everything. That means buying things or uh, obtaining things that can be recycled. As far as electricity goes, consider energy efficient appliances and lights. We just installed some LED lights and they're great. Heating and air conditioning, turn one down and one up. Here's a tough one. Unplug devices that continue to use power even after you've turned them off. Examples are the television, computers, tablet, and phone chargers. I didn't say this was going to be easy. Outside the house, uh, recycle grass clippings. They're full of free nitrogen fertilizer. Mulch the leaves, water little or none, reduce or eliminate pesticides, and plant a tree. As far as the car goes, drive the speed limit, inflate the tires to the recommended pressure, use cru cruise control for better mileage, keep the auto well maintained, close the windows to avoid drag, and buy fuel efficient cars. Or walk or take a bike. I've only touched on a couple of areas where we can make a difference. I challenge you to evaluate your own circumstances and set some save the earth goals. After the services service is finished, the ushers will hand out, uh, will give you a handout with lots of ideas. I suggest you look them over and take some action. You may say, well, that's a good idea. Or you may also say, he's just plain crazy. I accept either. Our slogan is, Remember to replace the water bottle. So I said you could have some time. Um, so if anybody has something they would like to add, we have a few minutes that uh, I've set aside for that. So has any, anybody got an idea they want to share? Sandy.
Good idea, and we'll, uh, we'll take that and publish it somewhere along the line as one of the tips. Anybody else have some sand? Great, I like that. Fresh air is good for them. Did, were you raising your hand? Okay. Great idea. What she's saying is to buy locally because then you don't have so much transportation cost uh, and it keeps the money in the, uh, the community. I believe that's one of, one of the things in this list, but it's good to mention it's a good one. Others, Marilyn. Marilyn's saying take a, a real good look at using pesticides because you may be killing things you don't want to kill. Japanese beetles and fireflies being uh, the example she used. There are some natural pesticides that, that can be used. Uh, other, other ideas? Yes, sir. How many people use the cloth bags at the grocery store? That's what you're talking about, right? I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, sure. Good idea. Very well. I will uh, plug the green team again. We're meeting Monday, the 28th of September at noon in the parlor. Um, I thank you for your participation. And at this point, we would like to stand and sing hymn number 707, the hymn of promise. <laughs> This is the time of our service that we uh, set aside for
pr for prayers, for joys and concerns. So does anyone have uh, something they want to share this morning? Well, I have one. Looking at some beautiful flowers that represent a lot of years of marriage. Would you two stand up and... Uh, And unlike the TV shows, we're not going to ask you what the secret to your success was. But <laughs> congratulations to both of you. Now, who can top that? Thank you for your son is here today. Thanks for recognizing him, Stan. <laughs> Someone said, who's that couple sitting in the front row? So we're glad they're here. Any joys or concerns behind me? Yes, sir. So Ross is saying that Family Promise needs some help, volunteers and, and items. Uh, and you've got a list and a chart set up uh, in the narthex, right? <laughs> I'm glad you found some help. Other joys and concerns this morning? Yes. The Gatonis are going to Africa and we would like safe travel. How long are you going to be gone? Enjoy. Doug. I echo the sentiment. Thank you. Well, it's a pretty quiet group. Thank you. <laughs> Please take a moment of silence to open yourself to God's voice and to pray for our environment. They give us fresh air for the lakes to give us water and soothe us with their ripples and the sound of the birds in the morning when we wake with the sun streaming through the window. We thank you for all the moments when your miraculous creations in nature have taken our breath away and render us speechless. We worry that we are taking it all for granted, 
the water, the food, the security, and that if we don't act soon and care for our environment, it will be too late. The changes are already evident in many places all over the world. Dear God, give us the compassion to realize our actions impact others. Thank you for helping us become more and more aware of the problems and the solutions and for infusing different groups and individuals all over the world with passion and a drive to help. We ask that, we, that you give us foresight and open-mindedness mindedness, to make decisions that will benefit our environment and oftentimes ourselves and our health as well so that when our children ask us, what did you do to save the earth? we can say with complete confidence, I did everything in my power and then some. Please give us the strength to think seven generations ahead. Give us the knowledge to make the best choices, to pollute and drive less, to walk more, to appreciate nature, to encourage others to work together, to live simply, to encourage others to live, live simply, please, God, help us change our habits. Forgiving and sustainable, God, we know you listen to our prayers. Help us to listen to Mother Nature and care for one beautiful and fragile planet. Oh, God, you heard our joys and concerns this morning. We ask for healing of those that are sick, and for everyone on our prayer chain. We seek safety for those that are in harm's way. We pray for those that are misjudged and misunderstood. We ask safe passage for all who are traveling. We thank you for all the celebrating joys in, their, in our lives, birthdays, anniversaries, children, grandchildren, and all celebrations. We ask for prayers for the family of the two children who perished in the fire on Friday. We send our condolences to the relatives of the Fox Lake police officer who was murdered. And we ask for protection for all public service persons. We ask for a safe ride for all the Harley riders who have traveled to Milwaukee for the annual bike rally. And lastly, we ask for understanding and patience for everyone affected by the stock market turmoil. We pray for our pastor and his family and for everyone in our congregation. Thank you for our many blessings. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts with love and serenity as we join together to pray the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We have a few announcements. Maybe. There we go. Tai Chi is on Mondays and Fridays, but this coming Monday there will be no Tai Chi. The office will be closed on Labor Day Monday. Next week, we have the uh, mission trip report from the youth. And also, it's the beginning of uh, Sunday school, uh, rally day. Uh, there'll be a picnic after the, uh, the service. Prayer breakfast is coming week. The pastor will be back. And uh, Wednesday will be for the ladies and Thursday for the men. Seven o'clock, it's a, an interesting time to, uh, to come and spend with, uh, with the group. Lunch Bunch begins on uh, this Tuesday. 
Bill, do you want to say a, a quick word on the title? Thank you. There's an outdoor worship service on September 19th. The, uh, t the time is different than in the past. It'll be 5 o'clock because of the uh, impending darkness that, uh, that happens at that time of the day. Sunlight needs help. Mavis, do you want to comment? So if you know anybody that knows somebody that, that knows somebody that wants to be a teacher, um, make sure they get in contact with Mavis. Ross, I think you said everything about Family Promise. You want to add anything? Thank you. And cho choir doesn't start? Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Well, I was close. I always knew we could say no, but plug it ahead of time. Thank you for all you do. Yes. Meal site this, this month, and yes. Reflection starts this week also. Okay, thank you much.
I invite the ushers to take up our offering, please. <laughs> This is a thanksgiving prayer from the Iroquois Nation. We return thanks to our mother, the earth, which sustains us. We return thanks to the rivers and the streams which supply us with water. We return thanks to all herbs which give medicines for, to cure our diseases. We return thanks to the moon and the stars which have given us their light when the sun was gone. We return thanks to the sun that has looked upon the earth with a beneficent eye. Lastly, we return thanks to the great spirit in whom it is embodied all goodness and who directs all things for the good of her children. Amen. And we'll sing our last hymn this morning, All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 147. Compassionate and loving God, you created the world for us to share, a world of beauty and plenty. Create in us a desire to live simply so that our lives reflect your generosity. 
Creator God, you gave us the responsibility for the earth, a world of riches and delight. Create in us a desire to live sustainably so that those who follow after us may enjoy the fruits of their creation. I invite you to go in the peace of God this morning.